Chewy, the online pet retailer, about a percent and a half higher today, but still down more than 70 percent from their all-time high. Roth MKM naming this stock a top pick, saying shares were at their lowest valuation since the first quarter of last year. It's trading at just one-time sales versus a peak of more than five times sales back during the boom. Here to discuss why he sees 50 percent upside, the analyst behind this call, David Bellinger with Roth MKM. David, welcome. Hey, Kelly, thanks for having me. By the way, as I'm trying to get my head around the story, is, is Ryan Cohen still involved with this stock? Remind me. He is not. He has been out for some time now. OK, so this is a, a Ryan Cohen free, just chewy as a business valuation reset. Is it uh, profitable? Does it make money yet? Yeah, so Chewy's had an inflection point, in my view. They've had a big step up in active customers. So at the end of 2019, they had about 13 million actives. Now we're sitting just over 20 million. And over these last four quarters, Chewy's flipped to positive adjusted EBITDA, positive net income, whether you include share-based compensation or not. And I think this is becoming a much more profitable, profitable business from here. You've got $11 billion in revenue now. About seven to $8 billion of that is auto ship. And they're managing the expense base very well around that. They've got great visibility, just given that this subscription model is really working. And I think that's what helps Chewy get to the next level from here. At some point, do we start talking about valuation and, you know, old fuddy-duddy PE terms? Or are we th still a ways off from that? Well, I'm sure we'll get there eventually. So uh, I'm looking at valuation in terms of revenue at this point as Chewy continues to invest and build out their business model. But as we get a little further out, maybe a couple of years from now, we'll start looking at this on a EV to EBITDA basis and then eventually PE. And I do think there is some kind of coiled spring dynamic here within the earnings line. And you know, once they move past these larger investments, Chewy's going international now. They're also getting into healthcare, some of these higher margin businesses. And that could push them to a you know, high single digit type EBITDA margin business. And I think with that, you've got a big step up in earnings growth. Is online delivery a, a business model with long-term promise? You know, is the profitability going to deliver these, you know, what were incredibly high valuations? Yeah, it's a great question. I think it depends on the category. So Chewy, it is big and bulky product, right? They are delivering some 50-pound bags of dog food, cat litter, things of that nature. But going back to my point earlier, I think they have hit this tipping point in terms of scale where... You know, they can make these two-day deliveries, but do it in a very profitable way. And just step back here for a second. Chewy's not like some of these other e-commerce names where you had a big pull forward in demand. I'm, I'm talking about like a Wayfair, Carvana, Peloton. I was thinking support, of Wayfair exactly, yeah. Where you have this big pull forward, but then the management teams aggressively invested behind that. Okay, so Chewy's largely sidestepped that. Okay, they, they didn't step up and overhire or build their expense base in a, in a way where they can't catch up to that. And now we're seeing some of these other models really have the, the revenue line pull back and revenues unwind. Chewy's been largely immune to that. They're still growing revenues at a double-digit clip. And look, I, I think that continues from here on out. Yeah, I was going to ask if they were kind of the only name in your coverage universe that you were positive on, but they're kind of the only online retailer in your coverage universe, which mostly has names like AutoZone and Five Below and, you know, I mean, yes, Wayfair, but Home Depot even, which you're neutral on. So um, why do you think there's 50 percent upside kind of in the near term and what could be, you know, a recession within a quarter or two? Yeah, so I do cover an interesting group, consumer growth and e-commerce. And stepping back, Chewy Screens is one of these names with big potential upside here. And it's a bit of a hybrid, right, where you, you, you to, we're all talking about recession. Pet has been a fantastic category, okay? And They've been able to pass through a lot of pricing inflation. You've got pet food up double digits. They've largely been a beneficiary of that. And it, it's to me, it screens as one of these healthier categories, one of these more stable categories. Mm -hmm. So if we do have some kind of spending pullback, I, I think Chewy is pretty safe. And then if we do get in more of an all clear to these growthier names, you know, names like Auto Parts, like AutoZone, O'Reilly, they, they could potentially become a source of funds for these higher growth names if, if we do get that all clear. Mm, good point. I mean, AutoZone O'Reilly, like MasterCard and Visa, you know, and maybe NVIDIA last decade. Now I feel like these auto parts retailers have been on kind of a similar hot streak lately. And you're bullet, you're positive on them still, right? I am. I, in unison with this Chew report, I notched down O'Reilly Auto for my top pick. I, I've still got a buy rating on it. I think it's this slow grind higher from here. But if we look at the last year, the stock's been up 60 percent. Right. Valuation's starting to get a little stretched. So I, I think smarter investors are getting ahead of that and starting to trim. And I think the days of 
potentially 60% upside in a year. I, I think that's largely in the rear view at this point. All right, David. So uh, good to have you on today. Thanks for your time. Thanks so much. David Bellinger with Roth MKM.